You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you so much for joining me here today on this Training Thursday, where I want to let you know that every once in a while, we'll say maybe once or twice a month, I'm going to be turning our Training Thursdays into what I'm calling our Toxic Thursdays or a Detox Thursdays. And the reason is that a lot of people have questions that have really been spawned from my new book called The Rain Barrel Effect. And I, what I want to be able to do is again, even though this is a 400 page book and just really goes in depth on the reason why people get sick, the reason why they put on weight, the reason why they feel like they're aging rapidly, it goes through that and it tells you how to get well. It really does. But what I want to be able to do is take some of those topics from the book, explain them in my own words. Some people do great or do better instead of reading by listening as well and just kind of reinforce those topics. So today is really no different. And the reason for today's choice on this topic is that every spring, every spring, I personally do, I would call my biggest detox of the year. So my biggest detox, meaning this is the time of the year where I look to eliminate all of those stored toxins that have really taken place over the winter. For, you know, specifically myself, when I'm looking at winter in New England as that really cold time of the year, eating a lot more maybe acidifying foods or comfort-based foods to keep the body warm, our bodies go into hibernation mode. And spring then comes with this dampness. So in Ayurvedic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine, we call it a damp time of the year. And what that means in kind of you know regular terms is there's more mold in the environment. There's more wetness. There can be more allergies and asthma and mucus production, joint pain and stiffness. So what I look to do is eliminate those acids, waste. That's all acid means is waste so that we're talking about. That's how we're using it from the body as quickly as possible. So this has always been done, like legitimately thousands of years since humans, at least for recorded history, have done detoxes with the seasons. So that's why in Ayurvedic medicine, they literally recommend every spring, every summer, every fall, and every winter doing a detox. And the reason is that with the, it helps with the changing of the season. Now, if you live in a climate where you do have three or four real seasons, this is extremely important to get the body then reacclimated and better to deal with these weather-based conditions. Because remember, literally the foods change around us of how they're grown, where they're grown, what type of foods that we're able to produce with each season. And we humans, we think that we're not part of our overall in nature, part of the environment, but we are. Our body actually reacts and is constantly recalibrating based on all the different conditions in our life, whether it be stress, whether it be the foods we eat, but also the climate, the weather, all of those things. Because In the colder weather, our bodies are more constricting. And in the heat, our bodies are expanding. So you can look at it, you know, in a bunch of different ways. And again, we see that with the the way that materials are used in the home building. Well, the same thing really with ourselves as well. So today, what I want to do with you is I actually want to share with you the four main ways that our bodies detoxify. So you can begin to do these things on your own on a more frequent basis, but certainly for at least seven to maybe 21 days during the seasons. So here's what we're going to look at. There's four main ways that the body detoxifies. And I actually put a nice little image in the rain barrel effect. I'm going to see if I can actually find that specific page for you right now. But in the book, it tells you exactly how your body eliminates all of this specific waste. Okay, so on page 160, it talks about detoxification and it goes through the kind of the phase one and phase two detox. We'll get into that in a moment. But really what happens is the way that the body gets all of these toxins out, right? Whether you're eating your greens or you're doing whatever you need to do, really work on detoxification, the body eliminates it by removing it in the stool, your bowel movements. It removes it in the urine. So the kidneys basically filter the blood and they remove waste in the urine. And then it also is eliminated through the skin, which is the largest excretory organ. So it comes out in the hair. That's why you can see all these things on a hair tissue mineral analysis. 
comes out through the skin and your sweat. And then also, as you breathe, you're huffing off some of these things as well, not just carbon dioxide, but some of these chemicals that can come out as a, as a gas as well. So really, really important to look at that. And then knowing that, knowing if those are our four main ways to detoxify, well, we know from a natural perspective how to ramp these up. So this is going to be a pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but a very action-oriented show. So what I want to do right now is go through those four different ways, how to ramp that up, and then how to draw them out of the body faster. So we know we can eliminate them through the stool, the urine, the sweat, and through huffing it off through the, the lungs, breathing. We're just going to call that breathing. But we know that we can ramp those up to a greater degree. So I'm going to tell you how to do that in a moment. But right now, let's take you through each one of those. So bowel movement-wise, meaning that all of these harmful things, especially being filtered by your liver, can then be very safely moved into the bile and also into the intestines, namely the colon. Now, when that happens, when you have a bowel movement, then you just very, this is how the body's meant to work. You very safely drop all of those, whether they're PCBs or plastics, they're maybe pesticides, anything that your body's accumulating, your liver try to catches it and then moves it into the bile and into the stool. So that's why it's so imperative that you're having at least one to two bowel movements per day. For most people, one to two normal solid bowel movements per day, not loose stool, not constipation. And again, I did a whole podcast on essentially you know, what your stool should look like. What happens if it's loose? What happens if it's dark? What happens if it's light? What happens if it comes out like little pebbles? So check out that show. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and type in stool, S-T-O-O-L, or maybe it's under poop. It could actually be under poop. Maybe I was having some fun that day. So type in P-O-O-P, and check that out. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Because remember, we're at number 811, podcast 811. And on each of these podcasts previously, I've gone through all different topics. And again, I get about 25 minutes with you a day. So in that 25 minutes, I try to stay on topic, one concise topic, reinforce previous things that I've spoken about. But you can always go back, listen to those shows, especially especially if you're into healing your body or you're into natural health. These are This is your functional medicine education that I always wish that I had, you know, growing up. I mean, how amazing it would have been if we had podcasts back then, if, you know, if we had all these, you know, videos, uh, it would be truly, truly amazing. But that's what we do now. You know, we move forward and who knows in 20, 30 years in the future, how many other great things we'll have as well to teach. So making sure that you have one to two bowel movements a day is imperative, not one to two a week, like some people have been taught is normal. That's not normal because what happens is this, if you're not having at least one bowel movement a day, you begin to reabsorb those toxins back through your colon. That's what happens. It comes back into the bloodstream. That absolutely can happen. It happens with hormones, estrogen metabolites, and it happens with waste. So extremely important that we do that. If you're not having one to two bowel movements a day, make sure that you're taking in enough total calories, making sure you're taking in enough macros from both protein, fats, and carbohydrates, that you're getting enough bulk fiber from your vegetables. Really, really important. And if, if that's not enough, what I want you to do is I want you to start with our constipation protocol, which is essentially magnesium citrate, and you can use some psyllium husk fiber, or we're coming out in about two months with a new product called Advanced Fiber Support, which is an amazing product that's more than just even the psyllium husk. So we're looking forward to bringing you that in about two months. We're, we're always going to be bringing you new products every couple months just to, to one-up what we're currently doing right now. Like Everything we're doing right now is what we've been doing for years, and it's great, and it works great. If we can do it even a little bit better, even a little better, hey, that's what we want to do. We all want to evolve. That's the whole point. It never means that what we were doing previously didn't work or wasn't good. It's just like, hey, can we ever take this to that next level through delivery methods, through whatever it might be? And so that's what we do. That is, so that is what I'm recommending, making sure you get enough of all your macros, making sure obviously that we're reducing stress, that you are getting enough fiber in your diet, and that if needed, take a little bit of that magnesium citrate or magnesium in general, help with bowel motility and that you're getting in your fiber support as needed. So this next part also helps to help with a really healthy bowel movement. A lot of people are constipated because they're not getting in enough fluid. They're not getting enough water. One of the ways you can kind of tell that is if your stool does come out as little pebbles, a lot of times that is dehydration or a lack of fiber in general, but we need enough fluid in the body. All right. So if your body is dehydrated, if your cells are dehydrated, your body will actually, it will absorb, it will take out the water that's in your colon back into your body and for your blood. Your blood is 90% water by volume and your cells need water as, as well. So, I mean, your muscle tissue is 72% water. You need hydration. It's so important that you're getting about half of your body weight in water per day. So what does that mean? 
Well, it means if you weigh about 160 pounds, I did a whole podcast on this on how much water you need per day. 160 pounds or so, that's 80 ounces of water per day. So that's about 10 glasses of water. Now, that doesn't include how active you are or sweating or in a hot environment or whatever it might be. You might need more. And no one really needs less. But here's the interesting thing. If you are really battling with adrenal-based issues and you have like you showed up as low sodium on your hair tissue mineral analysis or any of these things, drinking a lot of water can actually deplete you of more minerals. So here's what we need to do. We don't need to drink less water, but that water may may actually need to contain sea salt. So you put in a pinch of sea salt, maybe a squeeze of lime. So there's your sodium, there's your potassium, and maybe you drop in some trace minerals, okay? So that your body is not just getting the water, but it's getting the minerals. Because remember, your cells are activated through osmosis of minerals. So sodium, particularly, it's extracellular outside of the cell. Potassium's intracellular inside the cell. And we need that to actually not allow too much fluid into the cell and also not allow too much contents to leave the cell as well. So really, really important that you look at that is that if you like, oh, no, I really don't like water. Think about what you do enjoy drinking. Like maybe you just drink some diluted vegetable juice, meaning that you make some vegetable juice or one of my favorites is carrot juice. And maybe you just add some spring water to that. So what you get is all the minerals in that carrot juice or celery juice. And then that gives you the salts and the things that you need naturally from those vegetables and your body just soaks it up. And that's something that um, I like to do myself, but certainly I use a pinch of sea salt or I'm just drinking spring water, which naturally contains a lot of minerals. So, I mean, there's so many great spring waters out there. I've done whole episodes on water filters. So you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, type in water filter. And then you can also just, again, pick up great spring water, or you might even have a spring in your location that you're able to use that's been tested clean. And then you can filter that too, if you want for parasites, things like that. So anyway, Mountain Valley is a great spring water. Saka, S-A-K-A is a great spring water. Jala, which I mentioned before, is a great aquifer-based spring water. What else is great? There's so many great ones out there, right? And then as a little treat, sometimes I like a glass of Pellegrino and I squeeze a lime right in that. That's one of my favorites to do, especially at night with dinner. So instead of choosing like an alcoholic beverage, I'll just do some Pellegrino splash of lime. And then I'm, if I'm out with friends and I don't want to drink alcohol that night, I'll do the same thing. I'll do Pellegrino, splash of cranberry, squeeze of lime, and I'm good to go. I feel like I'm drinking a real drink. But again, I've chatted about that on, on previous shows and I'm so happy that a lot of you have been doing that same thing. And you know, really enjoying yourself, really enjoying the company of others. And you know, you feel like you're drinking a fun little drink, but the truth is that you don't need alcohol all the time. You know, you don't. And you'll be so much healthier on your healing process if you're not always consuming it. All right. Because especially as we're talking about detoxification, right? We're talking about detoxification. The liver is the most important thing for detoxification. We'll get to that in a moment. And alcohol certainly hurts that liver because your liver needs to go after that the ethanol, the alcohol and uh, really break that down, eliminate it from the body. So obviously that you don't get poisoned by alcohol, right? That's the whole point. All right. So the next one, uh, well, let me add one more thing. A lot of people ask, can I drink herbal tea? Yes, herbal tea can count as some of your water, but I wouldn't make that all of your beverages. So drinking some chamomile tea or ginger tea, perfectly acceptable. Ginger tea, especially with meals, can be great for a lot of people who need to strengthen their digestion. So totally fine. And, And one cup of black coffee per day, as long as there's no adrenal-based, stress-based issues, anxiety, black organic coffee should be totally fine for most people before lunch. And I'll do a whole podcast. I've done a few podcasts on coffee, so you can certainly check out those shows by just typing coffee into the search bar on the podcast page. But I'm going to do one specifically on the best time of the day to have coffee and those types of things. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up. All right. So we, we talked about stool, having one to two bowel movements a day. We talked about urine by getting enough fluid, at least half your body weight in water per day is your goal to shoot for. You can always have more if your body's hydrated. And and again, you can check your urine. So your urine should be a pale yellow color, not necessarily crystal clear, but a pale yellow color. And then if it's dark yellow, of course, you may need more hydration. And if it's bright yellow, well, that's probably from your B vitamins. So that's okay. All right. Now the sweat is our next one. Okay. So what do we want to do? Well, I'll tell you right now. And you know, I didn't give this maybe as much credit, let's say six years ago, seven years ago. But over the last four to five years, certainly, I honestly believe that humans are meant to sweat on a daily basis. I really believe that now. And so it's difficult, you know, because I kind of go back and forth and there's only so many recommendations I can make someone when they come to be in my practice 
you know, starting out because if they're not eating well, they're not never taking supplements, they're not working on stress. It's like, how many things can you give a person? So I tell them, I give them an order of importance for them. But I truly believe that we would all be a lot healthier if we sweat on a daily basis. And that's because our body, it's very easy for to eliminate toxins through the skin and it allows our skin to breathe. So we heat up the body, you know, when we're exercising or sweating in general. Again, I'm going to talk about different alternatives instead of exercising. We heat up the body. It allows it to kill viruses. It allows it to kill bacteria. And it also, it's so good for your skin. Your skin needs that sweat on it. It really does. And if we believe, and I do, I believe that humans originated from a warm climate, that this would be a natural, a natural substrate, although that's not the best word here, of the human body is to be able to get that sweat out. You know, this is a normal detoxification based method. And I just look at all the people around me and maybe they sweat once a week. Maybe they said sweat twice a week during a workout. Some people never sweat, like they legitimately never sweat. Think about it. All of those toxins enclosed in your body. And if you're someone that's not having one or two bowel movements a day, and if you're someone that's not drinking half your body weight in water and you're not sweating, how is your body supposed to get all these toxins out of it? Remember, toxins are one of the two things that we need to do to heal the body. It's replace deficiencies and remove toxicities. This is why over time you fill up that rain barrel, right? The rain barrel effect is in in a play every single day. As your body starts to fill up with all these toxins over the years, it then comes out as dis-ease. And all of a sudden, whoa, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, autoimmune, skin issues, hair is falling out, like all of these things, right? Well, you know, the problem is this, is conventional medicine has never stopped to look and say, hey, well, maybe just maybe it's an accumulation-based issues. And that's what we're talking about is eliminating the accumulation. Okay. So a couple things you can do. You can actually exercise, right? You can exercise on a daily basis, whether it's doing cardio or whether it's doing resistance training. Please tune back for my training Thursdays. I've talked about the ideal workout schedule. I've talked about aerobics making a comeback. One of the reasons aerobics is making a comeback is because you're oxygenating your blood when you do aerobics. And I'm not talking about like... um. Jane Fonda and who was it? Richard Simmons doing sweat into the oldies. I'm not talking about that, although there's really nothing wrong with that. But I'm talking about getting on your bike, doing a spin class, or going for a jog as long as you're at your proper body weight, your body's in good biomechanical alignment, rowing, any of those things, any exercise, you know, playing basketball with friends, getting the body to move cardiovascularly and sweating. All right. Now, again, you can get this through resistance training, and, you know, nobody's a bigger advocate of resistance training than I am, but doing it all my life and, and truly believe that it's it can be another great avenue for helping the the body to heal. But what we need to do is we need that skin to breathe. We need sweat to come out of those pores. It is natural. It's great. And then I'll say though, a lot of other people or a lot of people in general, they can exercise. They can go for a walk. So walking is great. That's moving the body, but not enough to sweat. So for those people, and again, remember, we have to be sensitive to everyone's position. I couldn't exercise in the very beginning when I had myelogic encephalomyelitis, Addison's disease, my body was wiped out. Every time I went to exercise, I literally came down with like a sinus infection, sore throat, swollen glands. So what could I do? No one gave me this advice back then, but what could I have been told? Well, I could have done a sauna. Now, maybe I only would have been in it for five minutes before I felt exhausted, but I would work my way up to the 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day or more that I talked about on my episodes on sauna. So check out my episodes. Just type in the keyword 19 minutes into stephencorral.com forward slash podcast. That will give you the research, the research on how literally you can add years to your life by doing an infrared sauna or a sauna in general. Now, a sauna is going to allow you to sweat right? It actually mimics, believe it or not, a sauna actually mimics a lot of the benefits you get from exercise. I'm not kidding. Like this is legitimate research. When I read this and I still read it to this day, I keep, you know, because I'm looking, I'm like, how can this be? But what happens is there's these hermetic based effects that what happens in the body is the body is forced to adapt to this thermogenic effect. The body's getting heated up. So it still has to go through a lot of the same processes that it would with doing exercise, meaning like your heart rate increases, your blood vessels dilate. It's it's pretty amazing. So I'm a huge advocate of sauna. I actually bought one for my home. I had one at my wellness center. And so I can get the benefits myself. And, and that's the thing, like you don't have to exercise every day, but you could use a sauna on the days that you're not exercising. So pretty great stuff. I'm a huge, huge advocate of that. So that's the third way to eliminate sweat. And the fourth way to eliminate is breathing. Now, you might say, well, of course, I'm breathing every single day of my life. 
And I would agree with you. I would agree. You are breathing every day of your life and that's a good thing. But what you're most likely not doing is because you haven't been taught. All right. You have not been taught. I was not taught until I was 22 years old. All right. 22 years old. I get hired for my very first job at the Sports Club LA in Boston, one of the most beautiful health clubs ever built. And I was, I told, I think I told this story maybe on, on Monday. I was one of the, the two young guys out of 33 amazing personal trainers there. And again, like, I was like, what am I doing here with all these, you know, great people? And they taught, they taught, I mean, this was like really advanced stuff. And they taught us the benefits, actually. What, there was a very specific instructor. We were going through, this was advanced training. We were doing something called the Egoscue method, which helps people get their posture back into alignment. And they taught us about deep breathing and diaphragmatic breathing. I'm like, diaphragmatic breathing? What are they talking about? I'm like, I'm, you know, National Academy of Sports Medicine certified. I have my CSCS. I have, you know, I'm studying nutrition, all these different things. I'm like, I thought I knew it. No, I had no idea. Diaphragmatic breathing, talking about deep belly breathing, not chest breathing. Of course, I was a chest breather. And what happened was, is I was only getting into the upper lobes of my lungs, not into the lower lobes of my lungs. Now, that's where all the stale air is in the lower lobes. And it is truly what helps to really deeply oxygenate your cells. So although this, I'm going to do a future podcast on deep breathing. Like honestly, deep breathing has helped so many people get out of being bedridden to getting their life back. Now, I know that that seems like maybe it's far-fetched or anything like that. And I wouldn't believe myself unless I had actually seen the, the, a lot of the patients and the people in, uh, this was in China, in a traditional Chinese medicine hospital, and they're teaching them about Qigong. They're teaching them about breathing. And what happened, and again, it, once you understand like these things, it's not hearsay and it's not miracles. What they're doing is they're reoxygenating their cells. And as your cells can breathe to a deeper level, they are literally detoxifying themselves and they are better able to bring... So the more oxygen, the more nutrients can also get in the cells as well. Remember, you have 40 trillion plus red blood cells or cells in the body. Each one of them needs nutrients. That's how they function. They need oxygenation. So they're not dealing with this lactic acid-based environment, right? So this is so, so important. So how can we work on that? Well, so what you can simply do is this, is you can look in the mirror and when you breathe, you can say, am I breathing into my chest? Do I see my chest rising or do I see my belly go out and then my belly go in? So you can also look this up online. I can't do a whole show on this today, but I will. And it's just called diaphragmatic breathing, like your diaphragm or deep belly breathing. A lot of the ways that we teach it and that I've always taught this over the years, is I have someone lie on their back, they bring their feet in, so almost like a bridge-based position, or what might like, look like you're doing a sit-up. And I just have them put their hands on their belly, or really just like a, a book, a light book. And I put it on their belly. And I ask them, I want to see you breathe in. And as you breathe in, I want to see the belly rise. And I don't want to see the chest rise, okay? The ribs can expand, but I don't want to see the chest rise first. And then afterwards, I want to see the book now drop down slowly as you exhale out. So I've, I've talked about this before, the, the pattern of breathing. So again, you can type this in for a previous show. But I want you to breathe in through your nose. And I know a lot of people are congested right now. And that's why you have to work on healing that, right? I mean, I'm someone with a deviated septum. Broke my nose when I was very, very young. That most likely contributed to that deviated septum. Although it could be congenital as well. You know, I was congested till I was like 25 years old. And then I'm like, oh. Look at these food sensitivities. I should probably remove them. Once I did that and, and really, you know, took my, my eating to clean eating to bio-individual, what's best for my body, all of a sudden I can breathe through my nose again. I can actually do, I can breathe through my nose. It's amazing. So when you breathe through your nose, you're going to be able to better get that oxygen down through those turbines in your nose. It actually spins the air as you come in into the deep lobes of the lungs. And then as you exhale, you are exhaling all that stale air out of the lower lobes of the lungs. Really, really important. One of my colleagues and friends is a pulmonologist, world-renowned pulmonologist. And we talk about these things all the time. And, and as a pulmonologist, he's working with people obviously specifically on the lungs and lung-based disease, is they are not getting enough blood oxygen. So when he takes their O2 using an oximeter, you can see that they're just quite low. And one of the things that you can do is he's a little bit more progressive is that you can teach, you can teach people how to really oxygenate those lungs. They're going to feel so much better. So those are the four ways to eliminate through the stool, the urine, the sweat, and the breathing. And then the way now to get those toxins mobilized 
so that you can excrete them through your stool. You can urinate them out of your body. You can sweat them out of your body and you can huff them out of your body through your breath is to ramp up phase one and phase two liver detoxification. And again, I chat about this in my book. It's also on page, I believe that was on, what was on page 168, did I say? I can't even really remember. Let's see if I can flip through this quick. Somewhere around there, right? All right one, page 160, okay. So on page 160 of the rain barrel effect, you can actually see that the nutrients that your liver needs to basically be able to trap or to start the detoxification process is natural folate, is B3, niacin, is B6, B12, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, vitamin D, vitamin E, herbs like milk thistle will help, N-acetylcysteine, bioflavonoids, which we talked about two Fridays ago, or even maybe last Friday. Yeah, so it was last Friday on ascorbic acid versus vitamin C and vitamin P, which is known as bioflavonoids or bioflavonoids. Check that out. And then quercetin. Quercetin actually helps as well. But quercetin, to be honest, is a phytonutrient as well as a bioflavonoid. So that's almost redundant there. And then what happens is it takes those fat-soluble toxins from your cells as you're detoxifying And it brings them to an intermediary point in your liver where then the phase two nutrients take over. And that's things like calcium D glucarate, it's amino acids such as glutamine, lysine, glycine, L-carnitine, taurine. It's the sulfur-based like sulforaphane that comes from broccoli and cauliflower. Really, really amazing. MSN, N-acetylcysteine, I think I already named that. But all of those things can then lead to something called glutathione. Selenium is also needed. Selenium isn't in this photo, but selenium is needed as well. That's a mineral. And then your liver can turn these harmful fat-soluble metabolites into water-based metabolites. Remember, now it's water-based. Now, what can you do with water? Well, water, it can be dropped into the stool. It can be urinated out of the body. Water can be sweat out of the body, and, and it can be respirated out of the body through the lungs. That's why it's so important that your liver has all of these specific nutrients. So when people say like, oh, your body's detoxing all the time. Sure it is, but at a deficient level. So if you ramp it up by giving your body these specific nutrients, like you're doing something like the daily nutritional support shake on a daily basis or the daily activated multi or or one of those things, your body's getting those nutrients, mainly phase one. And that's why phase two, hopefully you're eating your cruciferous vegetables, but it's also why every season I have people do the Dr. Ball Detox. The Dr. Ball Detox literally gives you the daily nutritional support shake plus the two very, very important additional add-on products called the IU, which is short for Ayurvedic Detox. And that's the ginger and the triphala, uh, the turmeric, like all those great things. And then and then also the FM Detox. Now the, that stands for Functional Medicine Detox. The FM Detox capsules are what give you a lot of those phase two nutrients. The phase two nutrients are what most people are missing. So that's why we add those in, and that's what ramps up the turning from the fat-soluble to the water-soluble toxins. So if you're doing your Dr. Ball Detox this spring, like I am, like so many people in our community, what you want to do is you want to use those products, do the Dr. Ball Detox, and then see if we can add in whether you need the constipation support or just make sure you're having the bowel movements, you're ramping up your water. But remember, on the Dr. Ball Detox, you're doing those shakes, and each shake is with 20 ounces of water. So you're getting, I mean, look at it, you're getting 80 ounces a day. Right there, right there is 10 glasses of water a day. So obviously we're taking care of that urine-based part. If you can get in a sauna, you can sweat, fantastic. Maybe you can exercise after your first two shake fast days and then work on your deep breathing. You do that, you are going to have the best of both worlds, right? The best of the natural-based methodologies and taking into account the seasons and everything we can do for the body. And then we're taking into account what we can do with what's called bioregulatory medicine or functional medicine and being able to give the body back what it needs, what it might be lacking. And that's how we ramp things up. That's why I do it every single season. It's a simple thing to do, something that I truly believe in. It's the first place that I believe to start for most people who want to lose weight, transform their body, get well, and really slow that aging process. So I'll link up Dr. Brawl Detox in the show notes. I will link up the constipation protocol. What else can I link up? The infrared sauna, just looking at anything today that I might be able to do. And then of course, The Rain Barrel Effect, my new book, takes you through all of these steps, step by step. Hopefully this was helpful. I love doing these types of shows. They always come in from, um, you know, listener-based suggestions or people inside of our Facebook group, which is cabralsupportgroup.com. Feel free to join the community, share your detox success story. We have so many people sharing their success stories. I read every single one and uh, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And as always, if this show was helpful, please do feel free to pass it on to someone else it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. 
What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm gonna teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.